You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your old buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticons. From now on, you will take orders from me. <laughs> Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at tfylp. Welcome to episode 16 of TF Talk News. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, the host that sometimes is a ghost. News for this week includes a whole bunch of unexpected goodies, leaks, and we finally got our own official Transformers Fan Friday. Even if we had to share it with those weirdos in the G.I. Joe fandom. We all made it through, though, and I'm going to switch things up a smidge and start out with our on-the-shelf report and leave the reveals for the end. Sound fun? I can't keep my own afterburners under control, so let's go full throttle with the news. On the shelf. A lot of new items have been spotted online and even at physical retail this week, including Cyberverse Ultra Class Thunder Howl, which somehow made it to retail months before his highly anticipated Deluxe Class release with the final pieces of McAdam. The Ultra Class robotic Wolfbot has been spotted randomly at a few targets in America, so you might not have to leave the store empty handed if you didn't find any Seeker Packs. And speaking of Purple Rain and Big Blue, the commotion over their release has been anything but quiet. If you listened to episode 15 of TF Talk News, I detailed some methods of attaining them, but at this point, it's every bot for themselves. Through my huntings, I discovered that many stores were scheduled to put the Seeker set out on end caps starting June 21st, and it's sporadically appearing in stock online for seconds at a time. It's now a week later, and the pickings are pretty slim, It remains to be seen if a large amount of inventory will be made available on the originally advertised release date of July 3rd on Target.com, but I just checked my Magic 8-Ball and, um... Outlook not so good. The Decepticon clones should be right around the corner and haven't been spotted in store just yet, but they will be here soon, and someone will have to be the first one to find them. Could it be you? One last quip on the subject of finding items at Target. Our very own listener, Talib1980, in the TF Talk Discord, claims to have found Studio Series Overload at his local Target, but didn't pick it up. Oh, come on! Without any verification of this, I can't guarantee the validity of this claim, but regardless, Overload will be popping up any time now. We hope. Both the big bots from Earthrise have already been trickling out overseas, with Skylinks appearing at stores in Australia and the UK, and Titan-class Scorponok is appearing sporadically, and I don't know why. The original release month for these were August and September, so if you just can't wait, check eBay for some naughty listings if you've got the cash. And in today's News of the Weird, I present a DJ Soundwave 6-inch bus designed by artist Quix, available exclusively from Mighty Jacks. Quix is a street artist and designer from the Philippines that sways toward the anime and robot genre in his designs. This Soundwave has a gold chain and is spinning turntables, and the party follows him wherever he goes. The pre-orders are currently live for this limited edition of 500, and the first 100 orders get an exclusive signed Soundwave poster by the artist. At $250 with free shipping, will your portable DJ booth be adorned by this cute Decepticon recording artist? Probably not. Transformers movie fans have yet another incredible version of the Bumblebee film Optimus Prime in the form of Yolo Park's 24-inch tall, super incredible action figure. This thing is wild and is advertised to contain over 333 points of articulation. How is that even possible? Beyond just swiveling limbs and ab crunches, this thing has tons of internal pistons, ratchets, and over-engineered mechanisms that are intended to give this figure a sense of realism that no other Transformers robot toy has ever attained. This ain't no third-party back alley release. This is an officially licensed figure and is likely to become the centerpiece of a few lucky collector's displays. The price hasn't been announced yet, but Yolo Park says it will be on Wednesday, July 1st. Considering their smaller, less intricate toys retail for over $200, this non-transforming Super Optimus is probably destined to cost a prime fortune. 
So we finally had our day. The first ever Transformer-centric Fan Friday from Hasbro. With the teased six total reveals, many fans were putting on their tinfoil and coming up with incredibly ridiculous ideas of what they might be. As could be expected, the reveals weren't as wild as our imaginations may have been, but the event is over, and here's the fallout. First up was the worst kept secret ever, Amazon exclusive alternate universe Optimus Prime, which is in fact the dead version of Earthrise Optimus Prime. It's up for pre-order now on Amazon.com for $49.99 and should be shipping July 15th. Up next were two new Generation Selects Deluxes in the form of redecos of Spinister and Sideswipe into Wrecker, Rotostorm, and Diaclone redeco Tiger Track with both Siege Red Alert and Sideswipe's weapon accessories. These figures are designated as WFC, GS18, and 19, leaving a pretty big gap between them and the last officially released Generation Selects, the WFC GS10 4 cassette package. So there are at least seven more Generation Selects for this year on the docket. Depending on which leaks dripped into your glass of Energon, that is, but more on that later. Another surprising Generation Selects release was the IDW Centurion Drone Weaponizer Pack, which strangely is an anomaly reference to the comics, but most importantly, includes our first ever accessories pack with 17 unique weapons and alt mode accessories that can be added to other toys. Screw the drone, I want the weapons! If you were lucky enough to nab this set as it went live, it was unintentionally priced at $19.99, along with the other deluxe Generation Selects. However, a few hours later, it had been adjusted to $29.99 and a limit of two per pre-order. Like I always say, the early bird gets the worm. Don't be snoozing. All these generation selects are still currently available for pre-order on Hasbro Pulse with an approximate shipping date of October 1st, 2020. The Fan Friday event wrapped up with a few more retailer exclusives in the form of Walmart's vintage G1 reissue blaster and the recently announced Red Series. G1 Blaster will be a faithful reproduction of his Generation 1 toy down to the self-applied decals. This was apparently a fan vote winner and is currently priced at $29.99, which in my experience looks to be yet another price mistake considering how much the other vintage G1 reissues were sold at. If you are considering this figure, I'd strike while the iron is hot because I have a hard time believing Walmart doesn't actually intend to sell this for at least $50. Pre-orders are available now and it's expected to ship on August 4th. And finally, we got a good look at renders and pre-production samples of the contentious Transformers Red series. Red is supposed to stand for Robot Enhanced Design, but it's fine to promptly ignore that and just realize this is to Transformers what the Black series is to Star Wars. Our first revealed characters are all G1 favorites, Optimus Prime, Megatron, and Soundwave. These are decently articulated 6-inch representations of classic characters and include a variety of faces and hands when applicable. At last, we've been treated to accurate on-screen versions of these iconic figures without the burden of transformation hindering the look and feel of their persona. Sure, a lot of fans decree any non-transformer a scourge upon the fandom, but I have one simple piece of advice for anyone feeling victimized by these toys. Ignore them and go on with your life. Although all three of these toys were said to be available for pre-order on Walmart.com, only Optimus Prime can currently be ordered, while someone at Walmart forgot to switch on the pre-order lever for Soundwave and Megatron. You'll just have to keep refreshing until these listings magically allow you to add them to your cart, but these figures are set to ship between August and September of this year. And that brings us off the shelf and into the, the reveal, reveal spiel. Prior to this Fan Friday, the Red Series made a splash on the net with official photography of Optimus Prime and Megatron hitting non-Transformers news sites. But well before that, a few other mysterious toy listings started to make sense. Back in April, Transformers Red, Megatron, and Soundwave were found in Walmart's inventory schema, but we just weren't quite sure what they meant. In light of the Red series announcement, three more Red figures have been spotted. Generation 1 Bumblebee, Prime RC, and Beast Wars Cheetor. It seems like these six figures consist of the first wave of Transformers Red, but Hasbro has only hinted at characters from other universes being present in this toy line so far. Without having to traverse the transformation problem with this new toy line, the possibilities are really endless. 
characters that may have been too risky or too fringe to release may now see the light of day as a non-transforming action figure in the Red series. Hasbro is playing it pretty safe with the first wave, but we should all eagerly await what may be in store for future waves. Also, Walmart, can you please slow it down a bit? You already have two other exclusive Transformers toy lines. Sheesh! The reveals of Tiger Track and Rotor Storm in the Generations Select line surprised quite a few fans because they were probably expecting official reveals of the three new in-hand Generation Select toys that hit the net in the past two weeks, Deluxe Hubcap, Exhaust, and Grease Pit. In-package photos of Grease Pit and Exhaust came from eBay auctions of all places. Exhaust is that expected redeco of Earthrise Wheeljack in his Marlboro Diaclone deco. Printed on the front side of the car is the word Bandit, a la Smokey and the Bandit. <coughs> Grease Pit, as expected, is a remold of Ironworks and increases the Decepticon ranks, but allows for expanding the horror that is Transformers modulator artistry to new levels. And then there's Hubcap, the little yellow redeco of Cliffjumper with a G1 accurate head and new weapons. All three of these generation selects were originally slated for release this summer via wholesale sell sheets. But with the demise of San Diego Comic-Con, just how should we expect these to see the light of day? I don't know. You'll just have to stay tuned. Yet another drip fell out of the Asian Weibo faucet this week with photos of another Voyager Conehead Seeker, Dirge. Although this one wasn't fully assembled and was missing an arm. It wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. This figure sports the same remoldings as Thrust seen a few weeks ago, and we get a better look at how the wings will function with the additional hinges on the legs. It's still unclear which of the Coneheads will find their way into the Amazon Elite Hunters 2-pack, but it's a fair guess that at least Thrust or Dirge will be one of them. Flame Toys revealed another incredibly expensive and canonically confusing deco of a new Karakuri Transformer toy. This time, it's a black redeco called Dark Star Saber. There was a black Star Saber way back in the Robot Masters toy line, but this figure seems to be a bit of a stretch, especially when they retail for around $400 to $500. Although mentioned briefly at the beginning of the Hasbro Fan Friday stream, we still have little to no information about the teased Back to the Future Transformers crossover. GameStop did send out a rather coincidental message to customers touting that they would be offering more Transformers crossover soon, though, so you can expect them to be involved in some way. More information is supposed to be coming this week, so keep your optics peeled. But that wasn't the only crossover to talk about. Sure, we had to share Fan Friday with the G.I. Joe crowd, we can live with that. But the official Transformers Facebook page posted an image of their new classified series Cobra Commander next to a rather nondescript version of Starscream. Everyone knows this duo was voiced by the late Chris Lotta, but could this be a hint at what to expect for the leaked G.I. Joe Transformers crossover for San Diego Comic-Con that we heard about back in February? Yes, it probably is. And with that, I'm taking the rest of the day off to bathe in frustrated tears of seeker hunters that did not follow my guide. It's a great time to be a Transformers collector. Mr. Starscream, out. The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way! Fan First Friday, huh? Why Friday every two weeks? Maybe because that's when most people get paid and are more likely to buy this plastic crack.
You did it again, Hasbro. Don't be snoozing.